Today we are in Belgium at the home of Aloro CNC. They are a sister company to the RoboJob group. Now I'm joined by Ashley Page. Thank you very much for your time, Ashley, and thanks for inviting us on this trip. Now, we are at this facility and we're looking at some of the first generation RoboJob technology. Um, and they really do practice what they preach at this facility. Can you give us an insight into this facility and how they started? Yes, yeah, so uh, the RoboJob group was born in, uh, in, in the CNC subcontract environment. So it, the product has been developed around um, short batches, mix of components and things like that. So yeah, some of the older robots that are up to 12 years old are still behind us running day in, day out. Something, there's a few things that I've noticed walking around this large manufacturing facility. The, firstly, I, I've noticed there's a lot of people still operating machines. And secondly, I've noticed the robots on a lot more milling machines, three axis machines, fifth axis machines. This is more than I've noticed in, in, in the UK. Do you think that this is a big gap in the market in the UK? Certainly milling machines, yes, it's not, not something which we're well versed with how to automate and it's a lot easier than people think you're quite right so yeah you get more from a five axis machine even a fourth axis but still we can turn parts over for finished components and things like that but going back to the comment of um, there's still lots of people here yep I mean the robot and the machine can't set themselves the robots are there to complement the guys to sort of allow them to do better and other value-added tasks as well absolutely I was talking to Pascal earlier and he was explaining to me how they've upskilled um, the staff. Now, in regards to the, the machines, you know, fifth axis machines, there's a big misconception in the UK that fifth axis machines are for one-offs, two-offs, and why should we automate, automate them? But this is the proof in the pudding, really. Yeah, I, um, definitely, and that, that's certainly not true with the five axis machines. Yeah, your five axis machine, you're hitting all five sides, and equally, again, even with this example here, we can turn the part over to finish the sixth side and get a finished component from that five axis machine. But uh, yeah, uh, five axis is certainly, I believe, if you're going to automate, get the most benefits with. So actually, I mean, this is a short overview, but we'll go into it in a lot more detail. If you were doing low volume components on a fifth axis machine with your unique uh, stacking system, how would you load that with multiple components to make it flexible for lower volume work? So um, the software is, is, is fantastic. You can set up your components in literally minutes from setting, telling it the raw billet size, your finished billet size. The robot will tell you how many parts you're going to get maximum. It will tell you where to position the grippers. Um, you can have multiple vice positions, whether it's three axis or five axis. So we're able to have um, multiple places to do so. In my opinion, I think it's down to education really and people maybe not that have not used robots that have got a fear about them you know we were talking to some of the um, owners of, of, of RoboJob and they explained how they've simplified the software to make it so easy for programming how, how does this work yep so you're quite right I think there was a misconception at the moment which is it should have been uh, something which isn't true anymore so an industrial robot maybe many many years ago was something that you would say you're having a certain family of components and there's thousands of many many parts of the same part but now we're able through the software to um, create the, the um, build the picture of the component based upon that information the the, the robot job systems have standard systems that enable you to say well it will tell you where to position them on a grid plate for example or where to position them on a moving arm on a turnover station where your parts might need to be placed on a pallet so it tells you the information once you've given it the information of your billet you don't need to pick up the teach pendant of the robot and train guys that need to go on a FANUC course for example for the robot. Now we're going to be visiting the robo job manufacturing facility shortly what new inventions and innovations are we going to see? Uh, so RoboJob guys are continually developing software, continually developing new options. So options such as pallet load, where your raw and finished parts don't need to touch, so they don't have to stack. Uh, great for sort of the aerospace industry. Uh, a little addition such as uh, what we call an extra service might mean wash parts, uh, engraved parts. It might mean that we can have parts that can be inspected, but they are options from standard equipment.
Now, in the UK, we're, we're dealing with a global market, not a small UK market. How important is it, in your opinion, that people embrace automation and can they survive without it? Yeah, you're quite right. So now we really are dealing in the global market that we call globalisation, that where our competitors aren't just local people down the road anymore. They're now guys, even the subcontract guys are competing with Europe, competing with Poland and things like that to say, if we're able to compete with those guys at a certain level, one of the only ways to achieve that is to automate. Ashley, thank you very much for your time. So there you have it from here at the Aloro CNC Group.